you can't tell if it's going to work or not. Check your telomerase if you want as sort of a sanity check. Maybe after do a baseline telomerase now and then five years do it again and see what the difference is. I think those are all the peptides. I, I know that Dean had a couple other ones um, and we have some time left. So, but I don't have any experience or real experience with these. So I have Epithalon, Fox04, MOTC, I have experience with that. SS31, the bioregulators, Ogans, Allens, immunoregulators. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we can do the, the top four, right? Epithalon, Fox04, MOTC, and SS31. And then the bioregulators, I think that's more of a discussion point rather than a classification. Yeah. Um, Dean, what's your opinion on Epithalon? To be honest, it's one of those ones that it's it's a bit of a leap of fate. Um, yeah. When, when we <laughs> like use a, it. I'm taking this, so I feel good about my anti-aging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've personally so far done five courses of the um, Ukrainian protocol, which is 50 milligrams every six months. And, you know, someone said to me, well, is it work? I'm like, I won't know until, you know, 15, 20 years time. (laughs) And maybe if you do like a a telomerase check, because you can do one of those where you can see obviously the how how much telomerase you're expressing and in theory you can look at um the glycolated age of your genetics which gives you an mm-hmm. insight into potential biological age but it's it's one of those ones that from the research in terms of like how it improves circadian rhythm how it improves pituitary health improves telomerase a lot of it is theoretical mm-hmm. um you know, it's been utilized by the Russians for, you know, at least 30 years now from Kavinson's research. So there must be something thereof. And I mean, we only have to look at how old Kavinson was when he died as well. So there's some level of evidence anecdotally towards it being anti-aging. But is, the is cost- there a direct, direct study comparing the effects of epithalon versus alcohol poisoning? Because... It seems that vodka is like the favorite pastime of people in Russia, which I get. <laughs> it's cold. Uh, there's not so much to do when there's a lot of snow. So so I wonder if, if some of the benefits of epithalon is to kind of offsetting like a terrible lifestyle because it does seem that Russians do enjoy their alcohol. That's why a lot of these nootropics like um, cerebrolysin, mildronate, hypoxin, uh, bemetil, they've all been studied for alcohol withdrawal. And they all have been shown to be effective for alcohol withdrawal. So I'm wondering if there's some overlap with the apithelon studies. I haven't dived into it myself, but did you notice something like that, Dean, by by any I, by any chance? I, I didn't personally look at mm. that sort of level of what you're saying, but I, I will now and I will have a check. I mean, you know, is it something that you're going to recommend to everyone? Probably not, but... Mm. I guess for those who are looking at, you know, anti-Asian and how we understand the cell division and, you know, your hay flick limit of when you run out of cell divisions, epitalon slowing that down by improving your telomerase. Yeah. You know, it, it like what we always talk about, the, the monetary cost to do like either the Ukrainian protocol, which is 50 milligrams or the Russian, which is a hundred. Mm-hmm. You're looking at like, 280 to maybe 400 dollars every six to eight months you're banking that investment that in 50 and you know when you're in your like late 50 60 65 that all this anti-asian protocol that you've done in your you know 30s 40s Mm. 50s has paid off it's kind of like a government uh government regulated pension (laughs) yeah you know it's we've got to put all my money in and fingers crossed Fingers crossed, I actually pay out by the time I turn seventy five. <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those ones that you you can't tell if it's going to work or not. It's just this is what the research shows. Check your telomerase if you want as sort of a sanity check. Maybe after do a baseline telomerase now, and then five years do it again and see what the difference is. And um, what you're sort of hoping for is to hold maybe your telomerase level as it was five years ago without it sort of declining. Um, it, but. it does make sense to do it on paper because when you use compounds that induce hyperplasia, right, cell division, 
And in the process of hyperplasia, your telomere telomere shorten. Mm -hmm. Um, So it does make sense to have some sort of uh, telomerase activity upregulation in place, whether that's from epithalon or estragonal root extract. uh, Or no, sorry, not uh, astragalus root extract. Yeah, astragalus has been shown to upregulate telomerase. Um, I think either or. But then astragalus has the added benefit of helping you with your kidneys. And if you use maybe two, three grams per day, um, you don't have to mega dose it. Uh, but that's also an insurance policy because I still see people have elevated creatinine levels, albeit that cystine C is in range, mm-hmm. while they take um, astragalus root extract. Now, I haven't seen any direct comparison, but from a cost to benefit perspective, I think $800 on epithalon versus maybe Two hundred dollars on astragalus root extract over the years. Well, is it the same? Would it be advisable to do both? What do you think? Uh, so uh, the part of astragalus that they sort of see the telomerase come from is astragali side four or IV, mm-hmm. um, which, from my understanding, is in a very very small amount. Like when we use the actual whole root extract. Um, astragaloside 4 you can obtain by itself but it is like epitalon it's very uh, expensive yeah so yeah it's I like it personally on paper and like I said it's not something I'd say to someone oh yeah you need to do this for anti-aging because as it stands like you said I'm not going to know for 10 years whether what I've done now or not has paid off mm-hmm. if if you do have to budget in like an anti-age and stack to do it, then yeah, great. On paper, looks great. You're not potentially going to regret spending that money running your Ukrainian or Russian protocol. But if, you know, budget is tight and money is something that has to be considered, there's other things on top of it. Then growth hormone, probably. Growth hormone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think that has any anabolic potential, that epithalon. It's purely anti-aging, kind of like taking rapamycin occasionally. Um, yeah, mine or, increases glutathione, so you could, you could just take glutathione. Uh, glutathione? Glutathione, sorry. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Yeah, so so I, I, I don't think we can classify epithalon because it's so n- obscure. It's, yeah, it's very nuanced. But it, it, is, it is promising to look into. If you're financially secure and you're trying to save, uh, get a couple extra life points, um, 